Good evening. It's a very dark, cold night outside. And it's the third night of Hanukkah tonight, actually. So I want to tell a Hanukkah story for this week. And I'll add a Christmas story as well during the week. Because we want to celebrate all the wonderful holidays that are happening at this time of year. Hanukkah is a special celebration. And I'm going to tell you a true story about a little girl who experiences Hanukkah with her grandfather. And this is a true story that happened in New York City. And I hope you enjoy it. Rachel was afraid of the dark. Sometimes at night she would go to sleep and then she would wake up suddenly in the middle of the night and see something at the end of her bed that was quite terrifying. She would lie perfectly still, afraid, and then she would remember, oh, that's right, I hung my robe on the bedpost. That's all it is. Maybe it was because of that that she always loved the season of light. Everywhere in New York, there were wreaths and Christmas trees lit and, and tinsel. And in homes, there were families gathered around glistening menorahs and glittering precious. She loved the holidays so much. Now, Rachel's mother had chosen a very special school for Rachel. It was PS 137. She chose PS 137 because it was just two blocks away from her hospital where she worked. Rachel's mother was a doctor. And it was only two blocks away from Rachel's grandparents' house. So every day after school, Rachel would run the two blocks, up the stairs, fling open the door, toss her coat on the coat rack, and dash in. And of course, Grandpa would always have a hot pot of tea there. And Grandma often had fresh baked cookies. She loved going there after school. She liked it as much as the fact that it was close to where her mother worked. Well, Rachel's mother had chosen PS 137 for another reason, too. You see, PS 137 celebrated all of the holidays. They celebrated Hanukkah and Christmas and Diwali and Ramadan. And Rachel's mama wanted Rachel to know all about the many cultures that celebrate the season of light. You see, Rachel's mother was Jewish, but Rachel's father was a Catholic. So they didn't want to teach her one religion only. They wanted to share both of their faiths with her. Now, Rachel's grandfather didn't like this very much because, you see, he was a Jewish rabbi, an Orthodox Jewish rabbi, in fact. He had come from the old country many years ago. But Rachel's mother said to him, you mustn't talk about religion with Rachel. If you do, and she shook her finger, if you do, I can't let Rachel come and stay with you after school. So grandfather very carefully tried to avoid any talk about religion. But one day, it was Hanukkah. In fact, it was the first day of Hanukkah. And Rachel was excited because she knew that they would be celebrating at school. And so she looked forward to Miss Mitchell's story about Hanukkah. Miss Mitchell was a good storyteller. And in fact, after lunch, Miss Mitchell pitched over and, and pulled out a great huge silver plastic menorah that had blue lights. It looked like Christmas tree lights on it. And she asked two of the boys to go plug it in at the back window. They did that, came back to their seats. Then she reached into her desk drawer and pulled out a special menorah. It was very small though. It wasn't very big at all. It, it was the strangest menorah that Rachel had ever seen because there were nine children on the menorah. And each child held a book, and on the front cover of the book was a letter, a Hebrew letter, spelling out Hanukkah. And the children, on their heads, was a place that you could put the candles. But the candles weren't very big at all. The teacher pulled them out, she held them up. She said, now, these are very special Hanukkah candles. They're made out of these wax. That way, they burn down and they leave no wax. Rachel thought they looked like big birthday candles. So she said, now listen, we cannot light these candles and leave them on because we won't be here tonight. That's why we have the little menorah. We'll light the little menorah after lunch every day. 
and then it will burn down by the time we leave. And when we leave the classroom, we'll turn on the big menorah in the window. Everyone agreed that's a good idea. And then Miss Mitchell said, you know, each day I'm going to choose one person to buy the menorah. I'm going to pick the person who worked the hardest all morning. And with that, she turned over and looked to Susan Brown and said, Susan, that would be you today. Susan got up with a proud look on her face, glanced over at Rachel as if to say, ha, I get to be first. And she walked up to the desk. Miss Mitchell gave her a candle and said, now, I want you to put this candle in the menorah. And then she handed her a second candle. She said, this is a very special candle. This is the Shamash candle. And it goes in the center. There are actually nine candles on the menorah. But it goes in the center because it's a helper candle and it lights the other candles. So she took a match, she lit the shamash, and then she helped Susan light the first candle in the menorah. Well, after they lit that first candle each day, they lit another candle. So by the end of eight days, they had nine candles total burning. And then Susan went back to her desk and sat down, and Miss Mitchell said, I'm going to tell you the story of Hanukkah. Everyone got quiet. She turned out the lights so that the only lights in the classroom were the, the burning candles and the gray wintry light that was filtering through the windows. She started the story. Over 2000 years ago, she said, the Maccabees, they were very brave Jewish soldiers, fought against the Greeks. They had invaded their country and they were trying to destroy the temple. Now, the Jewish Horses were a small in number, but mighty indeed. And as she told the story, the boys got more and more excited. They could almost hear the fighting and the clashing of the swords and the falling of the soldiers as they died. She said, they fought until they had no food. They fought until they were exhausted and could barely stand. They fought until the very last day of oil in the temple. You see, in the temple, there was an eternal life that they lived, and it had to have oil. And there was only enough oil for one day. The people were afraid that if the temple light went out, they would lose the battle. So they dispatched one of the soldiers to go and get some fresh oil. But they didn't think he'd be able to get back in just one day, and indeed he did not. But the next day, there was still enough oil for one day. And so it was the next, and the next, until the eighth night. And on the eighth night, he returned, and they won the battle. And so that was the miracle that made Hanukkah, was that there were eight nights of oil, even though there was really only one night of oil. It was a miracle that the, that the light burned for eight nights. And so that's why they had eight candles in the menorah. And all the boys cheered. They loved the story. Rachel didn't like the story at all. As soon as school was over, she ran to her grandfather's house, up the steps, through the door, and into his arms. Grandfather, she said, Grandfather, I thought Hanukkah, I thought Hanukkah was a, a time of joy and light. And then she told him about the story that Miss Mitchell had told. Ah, uh, that's what he called her, it was his pet name for her. Darkness, yes, war is darkness indeed. And all the more reason that we need light. He said that for you to understand Hanukkah and the light, we're going to do something special tonight. He reached down into his deep, big drawer of his desk. They were in his study. It was in the center of the house. There were no windows in that room. The walls were covered with his favorite books, and they smelled of the leather bindings and the oil that rubbed them. Oh, she loved the way the room smelled, and he had a wonderful carved desk where he sat and studied Torah. He reached down and picked up the menorah and set it up on the desk. It was a beautiful menorah, not at all like the one at school. It was a menorah that shined, and on that menorah there were Lions of Judah and the Torah and the so many wonderful symbols. And then he took a candle and gave it to Rachel. He 
said, no, you hold this, this is the Shemaah. And then he put the first candle of Hanukkah in the menorah. He said, but for this to work, we have to start with the room being totally dark because really Hanukkah begins with the very beginning when there was darkness everywhere and there was no light. So in order for us to appreciate the light, we have to have the darkness. I'm going to go turn off the lights. He just said, oh, Grandpa, don't do that. I'm always afraid of the dark. You know that. Well, I will be here with you, said Grandfather. I will hold you. It'll be fine. You sit here and hold this candle and tell me when you're ready for me to turn out the lights. She sat healing up her spirit, courage. All right, Grandpa, she said, and turned out the lights. The room was so dark, she could see no shadows at all. But then Grandfather reached down and took his matches. And he lit the first match and held it out and lit her Shema's candle. I like the candle. She reached up and lit the candle. When there were two candles burning, some of the darkness was dispelled and the room grew lighter. And each night as they added more light, as they lit each of the candles of Hanukkah, the room glowed with light. Oh, grandfather, she said, it's so beautiful. Yes, it is, he said. And you must remember, so you can see it. You must always remember the lights of Hanukkah. You see, the real beauty of the light of Hanukkah is that God puts that light in each one of us. Each one of us is part of God's menorah. <laughs> Rachel thought about it, and all she could think of was people standing in a menorah with their hair on fire. She looked shocked, and Grandfather right away realized what she thought. He said, oh, no, not like that. No, each one of us carries the light within our hearts. And whenever we do a kind deed to someone or help someone who needs us, maybe it's an animal, maybe it's a person, whenever we do a kindness, we strengthen the light and the menorah shines brightly. That's really what Hanukkah is about. It's about freedom and the gift of light. And then he set the menorah down in the window. Why do we have to put it in the window, she said. Grandfather, I like it. Let's take it in the other room with us. I said, oh no. We must put it in the window so that people can see the light and be reminded that they carry that light with them too. Oh, she said, I love you, Grandpa. Come on, let's go have some cookies and tea, he said. And so they did. Okay.